What is insomnia? Well, insomnia is the obsession, the anxiety, the worry around your sleep. But a major, major uh, factor of it is the limiting of your life because of it. If I want to sleep tonight, I can't eat late in a restaurant because I've been told that I shouldn't eat too soon before bed. And I don't want to be metabolizing food uh, too soon before bed. And I don't want to be overstimulated before bed. If I want to sleep tonight, I can't stay in a hotel because at home, I've got my bed and my environment absolutely perfect. It's the right temperature. I know that there's not gonna be any un unfamiliar noises. I know that if I'm struggling with my sleep, I can go downstairs to the sofa. So, you know, I can sleep there, but I can't sleep in a hotel. And I can't sleep if I exercise too soon before bed. And I can't sleep if I eat, but I drink this cup of coffee. And I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And essentially, your life, which is like that before you have insomnia, it just narrows and narrows and narrows until this, this tiny little road, this tiny little pathway that you can travel down when you used to have an infinite possibilities of things that you could do before you had insomnia. But you become so controlled and so obsessive around your sleep that all of that goes. So if I kind of kept people in this place where I don't add any resistance, then they're not free of their insomnia. So once people are confident that they can sleep, usually I then start gently encouraging them to add some resistance to what they feel is they are capable of. So I always allow people to lead it by themselves. But if, say, for example, someone hasn't eaten late in a restaurant for years because they're so worried around their sleep, you're not going to get that growth until they actually start facing up to their fears. And so I will actively start encouraging them to actually start booking that restaurant, enjoy their life so that they're not just obsessing and having insomnia right there in front of their face all day, every day. That's part of the treatment plan. And often people go, well, what if I don't sleep after it? Because, you know, that's happened in the past. And I say, yeah, that might be a possibility that that might happen. But when you had insomnia, you would try and do everything you could to protect your sleep. This is you with insomnia. What I'm asking you to do is do the behaviors of someone who doesn't have insomnia. And someone who doesn't have insomnia would not worry about eating late in a restaurant because they're trying so hard to desperately protect their sleep. And so really it's about that. So if I can kind of say to people, hey, it is a possibility that after eating late in a restaurant, you might not sleep as well as you have done in the past. But all I'm after is for you to be fearless with your approach, to stop limiting your life. Because if you can stop doing all that limiting of your life, then you're not someone who has insomnia. Because even good sleepers, no, they only sleep well about 80% of the time. So even if you didn't sleep so well after eating late in a restaurant, but you still did it, does that mean you've got insomnia or is the person who would have canceled that restaurant reservation or not even booked it at all, someone who has insomnia. And this is where that mindset shift comes when thinking about your sleep. So it, often you can kind of get people to a certain stage where they kind of go, yeah, I can sleep better with these behavior changes, but I'm really reluctant to move back into the bed with my partner. I'm really reluctant to go on that holiday. I'm really reluctant to do these things. But until you kind of have that confidence to actually start putting that resistance in place, leaning into your fears, your anxiety, exposing yourself to what brings you more anxiety, then you can kind of stagnate and be stuck with your insomnia. And it's never about pushing anyone to do anything. Any force is really counterproductive. So it's really about, you kind of get that understanding. I don't want to be in this position anymore. I don't want to allow insomnia to tell me what I can and cannot do. Yes, if I go on holiday, there is the possibility that I might not sleep as well as I would have done at home. But wouldn't it be amazing to just do what everyone else has, just to enjoy actually going and booking that flight and 
spending some time in the sun and having a break and just not constantly allowing insomnia to push me around. Would that be something that's better than staying where I am and hunkering down and protecting my sleep? And if you can get people to think about it that way, there isn't that anxiety attached to it because they go, you know what, yeah, it does cause me some anxiety to think about doing that, but it causes me more anxiety to stay where I am now. And I don't care if I don't sleep so well on this one given moment. What I care about is being free of this for good. What I care about is breaking free of my insomnia. What I care about is getting my life back. This is far more important to me than sleeping well in the short term. And you know what, when you do these things, actually, if you can be fearless like that, nine times out of 10, when people have done something that they're scared of doing, and then I ask them, well, how well did you sleep? Normally they go, you know what? I was worried about it, I was scared about it, and I slept absolutely fine. But let's take the worst case scenario. I said, you know what, I did it, and I didn't sleep as well as I would have liked, but I still did it and I say, fantastic. This is how you escape your insomnia. This is how you be free of it. And you've done it once. The next time you do it, because you didn't respond so, so frightened, so scared, the next time you book that holiday, there's not going to be such a fear there. You're going to be more confident. So whilst you might not have slept as well as you like this time, what if you were to do it again and again and again? After 20, meals out for example how do you think you'll be feeling do you think you'll be better then and we're like yeah i think i'll be fine then so yeah think about where you are with your treatment think about if it's time to start getting stuck back into life again and kind of be fearless be kind of confident give that bicep some resistance <laughs> and you'll find that you're in treatment comes on leaps and bounds all right i hope this video has been helpful and i'll see you on the next one